Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we're going to summarize how to find the moment of inertia of an unusual shape, like a triangle. And let's assume that this triangle is rotated, rotating about a central axis that goes up and down the y-axis, so this whole thing is rotating about the y-axis. How to do that? Well, again, you take a small little strip, and maybe how to approach it is, let's just find the moment of inertia of half the triangle, simply double it for the other half, and that makes sense. So we take a little strip here, and we know that that little strip represents a small little mass. The mass of that is going to be equal to the mass of the total triangle, or at least half of the triangle, I should say. Uh, therefore, we have m over 2 times the ratio of the area of this little strip divided by the area of this triangle, which of course is the half the area of the whole triangle. How do we find dA? Well, dA will be the width, which is dx, times the height, which is y, and y is defined by this equation right here. So, dm therefore is half the mass times the area of this little strip, which is dx times y, times the area of this triangle, which is half the base, times the height, which is 4. So there we have a dm. So now we're going to find the total moment of inertia of one half of the first half, and that's equal to the integral of all the little di's, and the i's is defined as the small little mass of the little strip times the distance to that strip from the point of rotation squared. So therefore we get x squared. So notice that this half cancels out that two, so these cancel out. We're left with 1 over 8 times m, which is m over 8, which can come outside the integral sign. Then we're left with uh, y times dx times x squared. So the y can then be converted to minus 2x plus 4 from the equation of this line. We have dx squared dx, which then becomes minus 2x cubed plus 4x squared times dx. We can integrate that. We plug in the limits. The limits will be from x equals 0 to x equals 2. And then we get the moment of inertia of just the one half of the triangle, the right half. And of course, that must equal the moment of inertia of the left half. So then the total moment of inertia is the sum of the two, which is twice m over 3, or 2m over 3. And that would then be the moment of inertia of a triangle like that using calculus. And so even with unusual shapes, you can still figure out how to do that by usually finding the relationship between the x and y variable or whatever variables you're dealing with, and there's a good example of how to manage to find the moment of inertia, even when the shapes are not regular. So by now, you're able to remember all the various shape of moment of inertia of the typical shapes. You know how to use the parallel axis theorem when the point of rotation is somewhere else besides the center mass, and now you also know how to find the moment of inertia using calculus. So now we're ready to move on to the next topic, so stay tuned, and we'll see where we go next.